In our last video, we showed you how to assemble some of the electronics inside our flamethrower arm, and in today's video, we'll be finishing those up and testing it out on my arm. One propane canister runs out fairly quickly, so I decided I wanted to add a second one. I wanted to build something that would let me use two propane canisters at the same time for double the fuel capacity. For that, we turned back to our small little brass pipe fitting pieces. This is what I came up with. We've got our valve. In fact, we've got two of them. This is what we built earlier by soldering on pieces. You can see the copper little pieces soldered onto both. We can see the knob spaces soldered closed so there's no leakage there. On one side, it's pretty direct. The valve goes through an elbow into the T, which threads down into our barb. What we can do is we start with this side with it closed, thread our tank onto here, thread our other tank onto the other side. Then we can open and we have both tanks at once feeding down into the barb. And then I've got this. This is just a block of wood I cut out of a plywood. It's sort of T-shaped. That lets these hose clamps grip on and hold it firmly in place. And I've added a little elbow bracket onto the top of that, which is what I can use to attach this whole weird assembly onto the skeleton arm frame. And now I can bolt that on right there. I've drilled two holes into the frame. That goes right there. Now, if I just had this mounted onto the arm and two full propane tanks above it, that would be a lot of stress on this one little piece right here. So we wanted to build a support that could hold everything in place a little bit higher up on the bottles. We're just gonna cut that out of a piece of wood. Mm, looks like about two and 13 16 inches is the diameter of our bottles. Take a compass measure out a circle, just the right size. By just the right size, I mean just a hint bigger so that it's not gonna scrape and rub. We're gonna go for some open circles. They won't be entirely enclosed by the board. Have it be open on one end just a little bit. Let's see, I'd say we've also got some extra board back here, so we'll trim that down a bit too. Our piece of wood is cut out, and if we measured it correctly, the bottles can fit through this and then directly into their valves. So I've got two propane cans that are completely empty. There's nothing left in these. They don't hiss when you push down the pins, nothing remnants. So I'm not gonna be risking filling the air with propane as I do this. There we have it, two propane cans. And as I said, these are both completely empty. That's why nothing is venting out here. These are just drained. So now I can mount this onto the arm skeleton and it should hold those pretty nicely. I've got one elbow bracket right here. Let's throw a second elbow bracket onto this piece and that'll let us attach both of them. Lovely, lovely, lovely. This brace is working well. It's holding our canisters right where we want them. All right, next up, we're going to want to attach the solenoid and then run the hose from this barb into the solenoid. Where did I put the solenoid? The solenoid, conveniently for mounting, has a couple of spots on the bottom with threads in it. So we can use a couple of machine threaded screws to attach that. And to attach it to the arm, we've got a couple of holes drilled into the metal. Our hose reaches to the solenoid, and in fact, we've got quite a bit of extra hose. So what we wanna do is cut it to a length so that it easily reaches when my arm is bent or straightened out. All right, straight, bent. Both ways, that hose reaches just fine. In order to dump the propane out, we need to be able to activate the solenoid. And to do that, we have our battery pack, of course. So we need somewhere to put the battery pack. I've got some space up here in between the propane tanks, and it seems like it would be a shame to waste that. So I'm gonna see if I can't attach our battery pack up here. There we go, that's held nicely in place. We're gonna take apart this umbrella and use the spring-loaded metal bars as a sort of extending arm and try and make our prongs reach out onto the front of that so all of the electricity is just a good distance in front of our arm. That way there shouldn't be any fire on our hand, there shouldn't be any taser leads on our hand. It should just be safer all around. Uh, okay, I think I need to completely destroy this umbrella. The umbrella mechanism is pretty simple here. We've got one metal rod that fits closely inside of another one. There's a lock that doesn't move until you press down on that. It collapses down. Normally, what holds it in the down position is some other hardware that I've already stripped off. Uh, we do have these 
little barbs down here, but they don't latch onto anything at the moment. So what I need to do is cut a hole in the metal right here so that it'll hook onto those. That way when I push this button, it should spring out. We've got the hole cut, well, filed in. So now we can bring this back and it latches into place. And when we push this button down, it shoots forward. As you saw, it's quite difficult to push that button down. This spike is a little more intense than we need it to be. So once again, we're gonna use the file. We're gonna keep the spike there, but we're gonna shorten it so we don't have to push quite so hard on this button. Here is what we're going to use to extend those taser diodes. I have these two leads that have sort of a ceramic, non-conductive back, and of course the metal up front. At the back of these leads, I have soldered on these two wires and covered the backs in some liquid electrical tape. And I'm now actually going to put several more layers of stuff over that to make absolutely sure that the electricity isn't going to try and arc between the wires back here and that it really sticks to the leads where I want it. We're also going to attach these onto the front of this telescoping rod. We now need to drill a hole big enough for the screw to fit in. And I'm then going to add some proto putty, just some silicone mixed up with some water, and maybe a little bit of cornstarch to just build up around here. Now, if we attach this umbrella bar right about here, we should be able to press this button and it will extend automatically. So we need to attach the umbrella bar onto the frame to do that. We've got a hole drilled right here. We'll drill a hole into this and use a bolt to hold that in place. All right, this arm is attached on one side but doesn't have much support on the other. So what I think we're gonna do is take this eye bolt. We will attach that onto the front of the frame right about here and that'll just sort of be a spot where this can rest. And we'll then tighten this bolt down once we have an angle we want. And the advantage of the eye bolt is that it should hold it in place and as it extends outward, it should be able to slide along that, still giving a little bit of support but without gripping it so it doesn't slide easily. That's what we're looking for. I needed a handle to be able to control both the gas and the electricity at once. This was originally part of a wrist rocket and I thought I could repurpose it to be my little double trigger handle. So what I've done is cut three holes into it. I've got a rectangle hole that I cut in right here and then I've got two more holes that I drilled down in the bottom. And then it already had one hole in the top that happened to be just the right size. So what we've got is a couple of different kinds of switches. So this switch is designed to do something rather particular. You can have electricity going into it and you can have something that is activated by the switch and then something that is always on. The second wire is the one you want to be conditional. We are actually not going to be using this wire, the one that is always on. So we're just going to cut that off. Now this switch can mount inside the rectangle hole that I cut out. And if I leave enough space, I can still click it. We've also got this little push button switch. Both switches only allow electricity to flow through as the button is held down. This one I'm gonna put on top and it's gonna be the activation for the taser and then pulling the trigger will drop the fuel. Beautiful, we now have two separate switches we can activate. Click, 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 click. So use a couple more zip ties to attach our switches to this other piece of aluminum. From a functional standpoint, this flamethrower arm should be ready to go. I think we need to give it a test. Let's try this sucker out. <laughs> yes! We're not using it a whole lot right now. Basically, we're just showing you that it is functional and I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten this to. It does work, it shoots fire, it's not mounted to a chair anymore, I can carry it around. It's got some heft to it, it's not exactly a super comfortable flamethrower arm, but it does work. All of it is mounted just on one arm right there. This thing is pretty sweet. Stay tuned for part three where we decorate this whole thing in some cool cosplay style armor and make it look like a giant robotic arm. 
Guys, as always, we've got more for you to see so you don't miss out on the fun. This box up at the top will take you to our last video. That's a good one. You should go check that out. The box down at the bottom is going to show you what YouTube thinks you need to be watching. And this bomb here in the middle will subscribe you to the channel. This is how you make sure you don't miss out on anything cool we do in the future. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.